Greetings and welcome. A blessed third week of Lent to you. We're here today to take a little pause, which is all exactly what Lent is about. We take a pause from all the chaos of our lives to focus in on what's really important. So today I'd like to invite you to turn to John chapter 4 for a rather long reading. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on his way, their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to each other, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his work. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard it for ourselves, 
And we know that this is truly the savior of the world. Thank you for hanging in with me through that long story. It's one that we don't really want to chop some part out of to make it shorter. It's a long story about this Samaritan woman who's had a long and troubled life and how she meets Jesus, the son of God. As humans, we have this tendency. We get stuck on the things, on the details of where we worship and how. We forget to focus on God. And Jesus is saying to this woman, stop getting distracted. Let me explain. This woman comes to him and she is a woman and a Samaritan and one who has had rather a troubled past. We don't know whether her husbands have died or left her or divorced her, but we know that it hasn't been a smooth ride. These are all reasons that Jesus might not have spoken with her, why people might have assumed that she was too sinful to interact with the Son of God. We expect the disciples to walk in and say, what are you doing? Why are you talking with this woman? Jesus says, none of that matters. The woman comes up to him and says, but we worship in different places. You say that you find God in a different place than we say we find God. And Jesus says, none of that matters because it matters whether you are worshiping God in spirit and in truth much more than where you find yourself worshiping. woman says, I have no husband, and Jesus knows. But he doesn't turn away from her at that moment. He says, what you have said is true. The woman is persistent, and in the end, she believes. It's a strange story for the ancient world. It doesn't really make sense until you consider what it is that Jesus is saying. Stop getting hung up on the world's details. Stop getting hung up on the things that the world thinks are important. Keep your eyes on the spirit. Keep your eyes on God, and you will be going in the right path. Jesus says the day is coming when you will no longer worship the Lord in Jerusalem or on the mountaintops. All these things will fade away, right, except this living water that Jesus is promising. which will become, in a believer, a gush, a stream of water flowing out of them as well. We might want to say, Jesus, you've kind of lost me now. You've got a lot of mixed metaphors swimming around in here. You've gotten hung up on a lot of details about this woman's life. Where are we supposed to be focused in this story? So I want to bring you back to what Jesus keeps returning to. These things that the world values don't matter to God. Don't get hung up. Don't get hung up on the fact that it's a woman or a Samaritan or where we worship. Don't get hung up on the fact that she doesn't have a husband. Don't get hung up. Focus on God. And suddenly it makes sense. It makes sense that Jesus is speaking to someone who, by virtue of her gender, doesn't have any rights at all. Suddenly it makes sense that Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman, someone that all the Jewish people consider to be unholy. So 
suddenly it makes sense that Jesus is talking to a woman whose husbands have over and over and over again left her, whether by death or their own willpower. Suddenly, it makes sense that Jesus would end up choosing this woman to be one of the first to share the good news of the gospel, that this was indeed the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, the one that we've been waiting for. It makes sense that it's by her testimony that the townspeople understand and believe who Jesus is. Jesus tells us that the gospel has very little to do with all those details we find so important as human beings. With things and money and success and power and prestige, Jesus says it is God who chooses over and over and over again those who have been disadvantaged, who are unheard or forgotten or ignored. So this Lent, I invite you to focus in. Focus in on what really matters, what it is that Christ is calling you to. Don't let the world distract you. Remember that your calling, your living water that we've been given is the unconditional love of God. And that can become a stream gushing forth from you as well. An unconditional love that says, I will not get distracted by all the reasons that the world tells me to judge or hate or guard against someone. Rather, this is a child of God in front of me. What help do you need? How can I love and serve you today? No matter what you look like or what you're wearing or who you might have been or who you are. How can this spring of eternal living water pour forth into your life too? Don't get hung up. Lent is all about focusing in and so I want to remind you that our spiritual practice this week is that unconditional love. We have to practice it, just like anything else. So find a way to love and care for someone around you, whether it's a stranger or a friend or an enemy. Practice those random acts of kindness. Find ways to look for those who are suffering or vulnerable in your community today, in your country, around the world, who is hurting. That's who you're being called to love and help without judgment, because that is the one God is speaking to. The vulnerable, the forgotten, the ignored. And I am grateful, because we've all been that person too. So today, I'm going to invite you to turn, if you have one of these red hymnals, to number 331. If not, don't worry, the words will appear on the screen. This is one of my favorites. Uh, As the deer runs to the river. As the deer runs to the river, parched and weary from the chase, we have come from hurt and hurry. Thirsting for your healing grace, Jesus, source of living water, may we drink of you and live. When your Israel crossed the desert, where no stream or spring was seen, Moses struck the rock and water, Float for them, refreshing clean. Jesus, source of living water, may we drink of you and live. Come and drink, I say, a summon all who for God's mercy plead. God's forgiveness, like a fountain, Close to 
short and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those with whom we walk this earth. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and evermore. Amen. Go forth in love. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.